Uh, my name is Dragan Rasimovic. I'm a game engine programmer at Trilateral, uh, which was recently acquired by Epic Games. Uh, these are some legal stuff that I have to show. Uh, this lecture will be about uh, believable digital characters for interactive storytelling. Uh, I'll give you a bird's eye overview uh, with some deep dives. Uh, I'll tell you something about past, some, something about present, and mostly about future. Uh, and um, this will be a brief history and philosophy of the digital medium. I need to go through this with a focus of things important uh, for interactive storytelling. Uh, uh, this is an introduction to a set of hard problems uh, awaiting storytellers of the future, and uh, more about problems than solutions, and more about what's and uh, uh, why's than how's. Uh, maybe for some another lecture uh, will be more about how's. Uh, these are things that you maybe know, but from different viewpoints, which some very smart people say that uh, is worth uh, 80 IQ points. This is not a technical lecture. I'm sorry for the tag because uh, th there was some misunderstanding with the organizers, but uh, there will be some techniques. Uh, this is who, who whom is this lecture is for. And uh, I will ask you to just uh, watch the screen. Don't uh, you, you can take pictures, but you will lose. Uh, you, you will lose a lot if you fiddle with the phone. So at the end, I will show some uh, references that you'll see on the slides. Um, this is my intention. Uh, and um, the maybe you'll see, you'll think that uh, some of these uh, things that I'll say are necessary, but I uh, really think that they're important. So. So this is, this is the idea. Who am I? I'll skip to this uh, part a bit. Uh, I'm making games. Uh, Ten years professionally, uh, before that, a lot before that, uh, as a hobbyist. Uh, this is the biggest game I worked on. I did, uh, this, this was about organic spaceships, genetically engineered by human race, and uh, it had a lot of things. Uh, it was done by a small team in Serbia, and uh, it was published by Dreamcatcher. This is some technology that we did, like uh, interactive uh, cutscenes. Uh, and the programming language uh, uh, that, that was part of the tools, I'll get to, the, to this a uh, bit later. There was multiplayer, and uh, I did some special effects design. I, I did some mobile games for Tubtail, uh, some... Um, I did some art for, for, for a game at uh, Supersonic Parachute. There are some characters, some models, animations. Uh, this was about uh, uh, AI-empowered uh, mouse, a lab rat that was uh, uh, trying to sort out things in a house of his uh, scientist where, where he, he was experimented on uh, and uh, printing 3D weapons to, to solve that. I also did some designs. The, the game died, unfortunately. Uh, this is uh, an indie game that we went uh, to uh, Independent Games Festival at uh, GDC. This was uh, whole procedurally generated with characters, animation, animation of, of the characters and uh, music. Uh, you, you can see the demo on the link. Uh, it won't be shown later, sorry, but you can write me an email and I'll send you. Uh, this was also this was a point-and-click adventure engine that I done by myself. I had a couple of friends uh, helping me for like uh, maybe two months, but it lasted for several years. I did some art also for that. I do other art, it's not game related. I do underground comic books. Uh, this is a game that I wrote in elementary school when I was 13 year old uh, on a ZX Spectrum 48K. Uh, this, uh, I, I had trouble uh, uploading this uh, like from an audio tape that's decades old, but I managed to do it. Uh, this was the machine. This was one of the best machines ever made because I was able to teach myself how to uh, a program without even knowing English because it had commands on the keyboard so you could uh, just uh, type in and, and the commands would appear. So it, it was much easier than, than today. Uh, this was one of the games that inspired me. It was made in Croatia in 1985 by uh, Susisoft. Um, this was also one of the inspirations. I'll get to this one later because this is one of gr greatest adventures of all time, I think. Uh, these are some uh, my, of my games for Atari ST, a horror game uh, with vampires. And this one introduced, this is a, 
random world modulator, which was a device that when you press a button, it uh, transports you to a random parallel universe. So uh, uh, leaving the parts around you uh, alone. It was, of course, not procedurally generated or anything. It was scripted totally, but it was a nice story. And I also inspired uh, a friend of mine to start a company that turned out to be quite successful in, in Serbia and worldwide. Uh, Trilateral, that's a company uh, that does digital life. What that means is uh, that we create uh, digital characters as assets for uh, interactive environments, faces mostly, but now bodies and creatures. We did some of the games that you know. Uh, we, we did some interactive, uh, not in interactive, but real-time demos. Some of them were interactive, so uh, you can later check uh, uh, the links to see. So this was Andy Serkis. This was the uh, uh, first time that we used our auto rigging solution. So it was mostly automatic, only eyes and teeth were not. This is done, done this year on GDC. Uh, our process is very complicated. It uh, includes uh, around uh, 90 people, some, something more than 90 people. We do a lot. We do uh, scanners. We do uh, uh, software for the scanners. We do all the processing pipeline and tools and real-time solutions for uh, game engines, and now we're uh, integrating that into Unreal Engine, some of that. Uh, we do uh, uh, scanners, are were first 3D, then now 4D, which means that they are uh, uh, doing 60 frames per second of full 3D uh, scan in, in, uh, 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 for, for the perfor actor performance. Uh, we do other stuff, rigging, uh, hairstyling, and uh, shaders. That's all part of the process. And we, we'll, of course, do magic like we tell computers to do stuff for us, and they do. Uh, this should be a video now, if I'm lucky. But probably not. So let's use the YouTube. Out! Out! Brief candle! <laughs> But a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then is heard no more. Characters. This is a topic. I hope this thing will go away. Please go away. Uh, so I need to talk about the digital first. Uh, I thought that first uh, binary uh, system was designed by Leibniz in the 17th century, but then my friend uh, Chiming Wong uh, here at Reboot uh, corrected me and uh, said it was uh, I Ching. Uh, so after that, uh, von Neumann did it with electrons, replacing these people with this stuff and uh, enable hu enabling human rays to do this, which is not a very nice start for an invention, but it got better later. Uh, this is first computer graphics, uh, bitmap uh, 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 letters. Uh, this is a sketch pad from I Ivan Sutherland. This is amazing stuff. You, you, you need to look for it. And uh, 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 the thing is, when once you, you can do letters, you can do text and then you can do other media so it enables to, to do uh, a lot of stuff. So uh, people started, very smart people started to, to think what can, can we do uh, with, with this stuff, which media. So there was uh, a lot of that done uh, early on. Uh, uh, at that, that time, approximately, uh, some other people started to think about what, what are the adverse effects of media, and this is, this is very important. So, so read this book. Uh, the thing is that uh, humans don't understand media. Uh, once we invent a new medium, we, it takes around uh, 50 to 150 years to, for us to understand it. After the, uh, uh, for that time, it completely changed us. For example, printing press, when they made it, they didn't, uh, it took them uh, almost a century to understand that they can print another book, some, some other book, and that this started the uh, Industrial Revolution. And uh, uh, because we don't understand them, we uh, 
we emulate the old media in the new ones. So we, uh, each one, this is McLuhan's idea that uh, uh, each, medium, each new medium contains all the previous ones. So, uh, so it was uh, discovered that a uh, computer is also a medium. It's not just a machine that can do media, it, it's, it's a medium itself. And the thing was uh, what kind of media it is. So it's a medium that can do the dynamics. It, it uh, does calculation, but it can do calculation in time. But because it, it can do uh, like uh, this uh, very fast, you can simulate things that you cannot uh, calculate on paper. So this is first uh, uh, gravity simulation. And uh, it actually turned out to be a simulation machine. So the question was, what can it simulate? So this is Alan Turing, the, uh, 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 who did some formulas that uh, much, much later turned out to be true, that they produce patterns uh, on uh, animal skins and cells. This was uh, von Neumann doing, uh, trying to make a self-replicating machine as a mathematical concept. Uh, and. Uh, his colleague also did uh, some experiments in artificial evolution. This is why I mentioned them, because they, they, they were doing digital life in uh, 1953. And uh, much later, Carl, Carl Sims uh, applied a, a similar idea to mat mathematical uh, um, functions. So he was randomly combining functions and got uh, very, very natural uh, uh, looking motions for creatures of uh, random morphologies. He was randomizing the, the body shapes and putting physics uh, to, on them and motors and then simulating the stuff and just uh, measuring how far they are from the goal. And uh, they learn to walk and you know, swim and, and stuff. Uh, you can also simulate uh, molecules. You can simulate the brain. This was done last year in November, like the first uh, electronic brain. This is uh, around a million neurons. Uh, human brain has much more. And if you are game designers or in any way related to games, uh, this is the lecture that you must see because this, this analyzes in very great detail of uh, what this uh, uh, medium, uh, the specifics of this. You probably have seen it already. So the thing is, uh, the, the next question, what it cannot simulate, and we don't know that yet because everything that was tried, it was successful, almost. Uh, this is uh, from Matrix. But the book that Neo is holding in his hand is uh, from Jean Baudrillard, and this is a very important book for us uh, in this medium. And uh, like uh, in the 70s, they tried to experiment with this and come to some very interesting conclusions, like simple rules can give you complex be behaviors, simple formulas can give you very organic and very complex uh, forms. Uh, then much later, Stephen Wolfram did uh, some experiment exploring exactly what, what do you need to, to get uh, uh, this kind of complexity, what's a minimal system to do, do this, and it turned out that the minimal system is very minimal. It needs just two states, so it's a binary system, and you need three rules, and that gives you universal, universal complexity, which means that uh, it never repeats, it creates new information, it's not predictable, but it's still deterministic, which some people don't get, and it's irreducible to elements. It's pointless to analyze the outcome of the system because you need the, the whole history is uh, what created it. Uh, you can simulate anything uh, that the universe can produce. This is what uh, the term means. But uh, you need to unfold the entire history to see the outcome so you cannot uh, know the outcome in advance. You cannot predict it in, in any way. Uh, it also, uh, Dave Snowden pointed out that uh, also complex systems can uh, have simple behaviors, which is very interesting, like uh, societies or, um, uh, or biological systems, because they have phases, like you can switch a system from a phase to a phase. Uh, and uh, uh, one, one, one of uh, 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 other uh, characteristics of the medium is interactivity, you all know that, you're game developers. But uh, people didn't know that in th at the beginning, so it was about uh, speed of computers, and you can also simulate time. This is the first game I ever seen that uh, uh, had undo function, like you could go back, and then that uh, gives you safe exploration. There's no frustration about like making a wrong move. You can you can do it. So then in education, I will skip ed education because nobody cares about education. So they they had. Uh, this is what computer lit literacy meant in the 70s, 
And uh, it didn't happen, simply. Like writing dynamic models. This, this was the idea, this is what computers were made for, and it's forgotten now, we do other stuff with that, we'll watch YouTube and whatnot. So uh, this, this, is, this was a system made for kids to uh, learn programming, and they were very successful in this. Uh, this was later rebooted uh, uh, in one laptop per child project, but, uh, and also they shown in India that uh, you don't need teachers, you, you, you can just give computer to kids without any instructions, they will, they will learn English to, to learn. I, I did this when I was a kid. Uh, this uh, research uh, in, in, in certain form is uh, continued on uh, Human Advanced Research Center, but it all uh, was forgotten at, at the moment like uh, when somebody uh, came to idea to hack the radar screen and make a game, then after that uh, all education thing was forgotten and we start play games, so uh, me too. <laughs> Uh, the, th the thing was the evolution of graphics, uh, it went from very uh, 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 rudimentary ones and evolved and uh, this is uh, Ken Perlin in 1995 doing very, very realistic and very believable characters, uh, procedurally driven, but this was uh, because, th this worked because this was st stylized and it worked for some times, we all loved this character, although she doesn't actually uh, look realistic or anything, but it, we didn't mind because uh, it, was, it was amazing to have uh, this kind of environment and a character in it. And the problem uh, came when uh, we started, the computers uh, became st fast enough to do realism, then everything that is missing, like your expectations, if the model is realistic, your expectations are also to that animation will be, and this turned out to be a big problem. So I won't show any slides, not to offend anybody, but you, you all know which, which uh, uh, films have uh, 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 done computer graphics that, um, that were a bit of uncanny. So uh, at first people thought this is uh, impossible to solve, but it is possible to solve. You just need uh, much, much better models, much, much better rigs. And um, this, is, uh, th th this is very hard. So at Trilateral this was done manually for uh, almost a decade more than a decade, you need hundreds of blend shapes, you need uh, a, a lot of human expertise, and uh, so you, you, um, th this is why uh, 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 companies come to us, because uh, very often it turns out that uh, they, can, they don't know how to do it well. Uh, the other idea was machine learning, but uh, machines don't get semantics, uh, but actually you can make them uh, in, in a certain way uh, um, understand semantics, so we combined human expertise with uh, machine learning, this is our secret sauce, like uh, do the both things. So, can we cross on Kennedy? I think yes, it will happen very soon, and this talk is not about this. Uh, I want to talk about what's coming next, so uh, this is the Uncanny Valley 2. Actually, uh, you will have very, very realistic char characters, but uh, the problem is that uh, expectations of the audience will also rise and uh, behavior won't match the, 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 the looks. So this is a, a kind of a joke uh, prophecy. Uh, a great mismatch will fall upon the world of games. Everyone will look good and move smoothly in high resolution with their faces showing great expressiveness. Their souls will be empty, their thoughts shallow, their words without substance, and their actions not as meaningful as the audience expects. So uh, we can maybe, uh, this is a questionable because uh, we already have a very realistic characters and uh, we all play those games, we love them, so what's the problem? And we can also lower audience expectations. This is what many companies are good at but uh, especially mobile ones, but um, uh, this will be the challenge. And uh, we, we might avoid for some times, but uh, we will come to the point where we, where, where we need to solve this. So uh, unfortunately, this will be up to game developers because uh, I, I'll explain later why. And um, to, to see this problem from depth, we need to go all the way to what the character is. So this is dictionary. Uh, it has to do with moral quantities, distinctive, interesting uh, strengths, and good reputation. So this all goes around the morality and ethics. Uh, in the media, like the other meaning of the word, uh, it's connected to storytelling, uh, uh, acting, uh, and uh, also person, but like... Um, uh, the, the various as aspects of person, but now in this, our medium, which I won't name yet, 
uh, we have this all changed, because when you put the player in, then all these terms uh, get uh, some other meanings. So, uh, and they all make sense in, 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 in that world. So, like, uh, player now becomes uh, the character, the person, actor, and the author. It can replace all, all, all of these things. And uh, it's uh, also the audience. Yeah. And th this is something new. I mean, when I say new, it's, I mean, compared to the old media, so it's new. Uh, so we need to examine, because it was related to storytelling, what storytelling means in the new medium. Um, why, I'm not, why am I saying medium, not a game? Uh, this uh, Amy Henning uh, told today on her lecture that uh, like, uh, we not necessarily uh, it needs to be a game. Uh, all interactive experiences, uh, all games are inter uh, interactive experiences, but not all interactive experiences are games. So, uh, games have goals, you can achieve goals or fail at them, uh, you can aim for them, you, you can uh, uh, get better and uh, also try again and try again. This is what an animals do too. This cute cat is, will actually kill a mouse someday. So she's training for real life and um, it's uh, actually learning to make better choice, choice in movement. And uh, this, this is something that, that games are in their core, but uh, storytelling doesn't need to limit itself. So. This is, the, for me, the best book ever made about games. It's not about computer games, and I advise you to read it. And uh, w the reason why I'm using uh, the, the word medium is because I think that the games are maybe one, one star in this universe that we have not explored yet, because we don't understand media. Uh, also, there, I think this is a Hindu saying, I'm not sure. Uh, so, you all know this. Uh, what interactivity brings to storytelling, brings the choice, branches the story. Uh, the first, you had your choose your own adventure books, but this was not, were not the first one. The first one was made in 1930. And uh, this is uh, changing what, uh, the, the meaning of storytelling, actually. Because uh, in old media, the author told the story to the audience, and uh, in new media, uh, participants, let's call them that, uh, they, they do a lot of stuff that, uh, that the author, author did before. So maybe they are co-authors or something. Uh, and this confuses all the authors, authors because they, they are used to telling stories to their audiences. So they are... <laughs> and uh, of course, what storytelling? So in, in days of old, uh, it was about information transfer. The author sends a message and the change as the receiver. This Claude Shannon, uh, you won't find this uh, at Claude, Claude uh, Shannon's work. He, he wrote about uh, communication. Uh, uh, but uh, this is what it does. It changes the receiver. So uh, the, what was the reason for the authors to, to do this? Like, OK, stories, people love them, uh, empathize with characters. Uh, they, they, they live through their destinies. but. Uh, Characters was about, actually about uh, choices one makes in real life and uh, goals that he chooses. So uh, characters were examples of what authors thought people should try to or, or avoid to become. And uh, so this was the, mean, uh, the, 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 the means to change their audiences, actually. That was the intent. And why? Because that was the best available technology at the time to uh, uh, keep record of what's good and what's not good. And uh, society is living and dying depending on this. There's a great book by uh, Joseph Campbell. You know him probably for a Hero's Journey, but this one for me is maybe even better. Uh, it's about myths uh, around the world. Uh, the, um, yeah, so we need to also tell it through a medium. Not always, but before stories were, were told in words, but uh, like uh, we started to use media and uh, Marsha McLuhan, again, uh, says medium is the message. There's no passing the message to the medium. The medium itself is a message. And he got a typographic error when his book was printed. So he got massage instead of message. And he liked it. And he said, OK, this, this is totally in line what I, with what I'm saying. So both sender and the receiver get a massage from the medium. And uh, they're both, both reshaped. So uh, we, as authors, what do we aim to reshape our audiences into? This is, this is the important questions. Because if, even if you're not, you're 
reshaping them anyway. Um, so let's say that we are benevolent, and uh, how do we do it best? And knowing, uh, knowing that the medium is interactive. So we need first to think about how it's different and how it's the same, and is there anything useful from the old media? So how it's different? You know all this, so this is the uh, um, old stories, like linear, not exactly linear, they, they wind, but uh, they get to the point B. Um, with choices, you have branching, and uh, so the structures that we are making, it's not a story, it's actually a story tree, uh, a, a tree of stories. So uh, the one, one of uh, the ways that uh, to solve this, this was, for example, LucasArts uh, games, uh, not of all of them. Uh, th I'm not saying that this is uh, wrong. This is I, I enjoyed all of their games. So this is just one way to to write a linear story and put put the uh, obstacles on it. So let the player solve the puzzles. But should be a, should it be about the puzzles? That that's the question. Uh, also, you can uh, be a very brave uh, writer and start to write it down. I, I did it when I was um, in uh, high school. Like, okay, I'm go going to write all the stories down. So, but the, the creature you're fighting is a Hydra. You cut off one head, it uh, two, two others go. And because this is exponential, it will go to billions very soon. So you, you can't do this, actually. So uh, you can cut it, trim the tree down and say, okay, this is it, but uh, this is again, uh, like on bonsai trees, it's too small. And you can uh, put the uh, uh, lines back together to make, make it down, but this is fake because uh, your, your uh, audience knows that, that it's fake. They expect the story to branch. They expect many outcomes, and when they get the same one, they will not be very happy about it. And you can make labyrinths out of it, but uh, it's still static. So all these types here assume uh, pre-written static stories and uh, our medium is dynamic. So somebody will ask, so what? Nothing. But uh, there's, there's, uh, there are certain applications where you need uh, your, your story to be dynamic. And uh, the last one, like uh, stories about player's character. I not, don't mean player character, but player's real-life character. There was a game uh, in 1986 by Lu LucasArts which uh, observed what you did. And he says there, we have been watching you. Be and he, can, he knows what you did uh, before. So it can be used as a medium for uh, uh, player behavior correction. Uh, that means ethics amplifiers. And also, if you want uh, it to be an art form, there's a unity of form and content required. So you cannot uh, use one form and uh, uh, have a content of, of another medium. Uh, so, like we're in the 21st century now, the medium is dynamic, it's virtual, it can simulate anything, it can grow information because it creates new information and it grows. So, can it grow through its story tree? If it has universal co complexity, it can make an entire world, like No Man's Sky or similar games. So, why not a tree? So we have uh, interactive storytelling, which we need to correct because we are writing them now, not telling them, and it's not a story anymore, but it's a story world. So we build story worlds, and uh, this, is, this is a thing that like a man is a tool builder. Man is not just a tool builder, man is much more, so he's inventor of universes. Uh, so let's see about uh, interactive story worlds. You all know Dwarf Fortress. Uh, we're going to go through. What, what are they? Well, places for growing story trees. Um, because they're complex, they're dynamic, they're immersive, uh, and they're interactive. Virtual system, what the, does virtual mean? It's uh, something that is ideal but is nonetheless real. Uh, and it's a system. So uh, you'll need all these things to, to make, um, make a system, and uh, don't be scared. This is actually very fun stuff. Uh, so uh, virtual systems uh, representing worlds in which stories happen. And this is uh, also different uh, from the old media because uh, stories were imagined by the authors and told through a medium, and now uh, they're really happening in the medium. Like you are uh, constructing a set of systemic rules and uh, these rules, uh, even if they're totally fictional, they, they are real inside that world. You cannot break the rules unless the game designer uh, allows you to, but th then that's also a rule that, that you're using. So it's everything that is happening in the medium is happening in the medium, and uh, it's executed once the world is started. Uh, 
uh, and uh, what, what we uh, get out of it is interpretation. Our interpretation, and there's a lot of uh, debate like how, how this should be done. Uh, but uh, it doesn't have to be story also, it can be just an experience, but it, th there is v uh, many, many good things uh, developed through centuries about stories, so we, we should use all that. Um, the thing is, because this is a complex system, the outcomes are not uh, predictable even by the authors. So this is one of the problems that we have. And uh, what are they are not? Well, all other simulation or world simulation, they don't tell stories about unique characters. So they generate, uh, generate stories about characters in the world, immerse them into that world, provide them with choices relevant to the story, but there's no story anymore, so characters' destinies. Uh, let them suffer the consequences, uh, the characters, not the players. Um, we, the participant, can think uh, about them, try again, and uh, undo, maybe, their choices, means explore the story tree, and then uh, learn the rules of the world they inhabit, so they can help characters achieve the, their goals. Uh, so it's uh, because storytelling is usually about characters achieving their goals or not achieving their goals. So this is here, but not uh, in, in the same form. What do they get that cannot get from the old media? Well, storytelling is reductive, which means uh, that it reduces the complexity of the real world into a story. This is writer's job. Writers are very good at this, and I don't think that we are, uh, very soon come to the point that we have uh, story worlds that are as, um, as rich as uh, writers can make them, but uh, it, seems out, it seems that everything is going to, to that direction. So it's, uh, 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 storytelling is something like a map. Map, map reduces the, 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 the complexity of the world. Uh, and story worlds are different. They are inherently complex, which means they're irreducible. And uh, system dynamics uh, make con consequences propagate. You affect these consequences. Uh, everything affects everything else, history matters, each choice determines the entire future history of the world, therefore the destiny of all the characters. Uh, so the, the, the different thing is there's an ever-present unity emerging from this uh, of events in space-time, just like in the real world. So uh, this is like in stories we try to reduce the world to important stuff so we can show this, usually. And uh, in story worlds, it's uh, already there inherently. Uh, also, we have this totality of wider picture in old media in the, indirectly, and here you can see it, tinker with it, and get deeper understanding of the rules that create it. And uh, there's, there's one important thing. Uh, simulation is not the real world, never. So understanding cannot be of the real world, but of the rules of the virtual world. Uh, and uh, this means that this is only a system of science, actually, that points to things in the uh, real world. So, there's a problem with this, and uh, Baudrillard wrote about this. Uh, the problem is called simulacrum, and a simulacra is a plural, and means the copy that dep depicts things that either had no original or no longer has an no original. So it's a false thing. Uh, in programmer terms, this is a null pointer. It doesn't point to anything. Uh, and uh, these are the stages that uh, Baudrillard explained, like first you have a faithful image, then you have a perversion of reality, then you have uh, m uh, uh, the, 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 the thing masking, the symbol masking the absence of uh, profound reality, and then you have a pure simulacrum that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Um, so, we, we know this, and uh, we know now that this is a science system. So. Uh, now that we are aware of that, we, we won't uh, get into any dangers, so we can think about what real world's truth do we, as authors, uh, point to. If we, if we don't, uh, we are just making a simulacrum. And there were too many already in 1981 when uh, Baudrillard wrote his book. So he was very uh, uh, disturbed by this, and uh, he should be. Uh, so. Now we have another problem that uh, our systems now are not, the uh, symbols of the past were, were reduced, and now our symbols uh, resemble reality, so it uh, be can become more important than reality, and people die in virtual worlds, you know, already know that. Uh, this is the book, when I read, I, I couldn't sleep that night, uh, it's about television, but it applies very much to games. And uh, 
So we should better start thinking how to, to prevent this, and uh, because it could happen to humanity, we, we are uh, more deeply, deeply engaged. So uh, the processes simulated uh, should point to real processes, so they are actually metaphors of real world dynamics. Now, we, we, we need to consciously do this reduction, but on the level of processes, not, uh, not story or something. Uh, so, what can we use from the old media? Uh, mostly everything. Uh, it needs to be adapted in certain ways, but uh, all the things that uh, work in drama will work here. Uh, also from film. Uh, cuts, for example, are, are, are one thing that, are not, that, that is not uh, so much used. Uh, it, it should be. We, we let players roam the world and then, you know, spend their real life time in virtual worlds, which, which is totally uh, pointless. Um, and, uh, and they don't play these games because they, they, uh, they need to spend so much time. Uh, they just look at look them on YouTube. And uh, the, the, the thing is that you need to express them as simulation rules. So we have a problem here. Writers are not programmers, and the programmers are not writers. The first one is easy to fix, the other one is hard. Because they, they, these are different cultures, and programmers uh, like um, uh, train themselves in different kinds of thinking. They lack, usually lack the skills of the writers. Writers are empathic, and they uh, think about uh, people, and programmers don't think always about people. I, I'm not accusing anyone, but I, I realize that programming does, does this to me, so it's... So, uh, we need better tools. This is uh, from uh, Genesis Rising Tools, uh, a programming language that we made. And one of the things that you may, might not see on this screen is that this here is actually an English-like sentence that uh, transcribes what the program actually does. And you can uh, click in all the parts using the functions on the side without having to do it. And it's very easy to read. And uh, we had, uh, we built this so our game designer could uh, use, use this and he's not a programmer. Um, how do we do this? Now this, this is the hard part, no more pictures. Uh, we of course, to, to model humans and characters, we need to model human behavior. This is hard. Uh, we need an executable model. So is this artificial intelligence? Yes. Uh, but we need to make some distinctions like a practical definition. Uh, is ability of an agent to, feel f to fulfill a goal in an unknown environment. This is by uh, DeepMind people. They use this as, a, as, a, as their goal to achieve this. And uh, they're uh, using games to, to actually uh, train these, uh, these systems. And uh, so, so it's something is going from games to general AI and then goes from general AI uh, back to the game. So this is Ubisoft's uh, system for moving characters. It's amazing. Uh, but uh, we need to make a distinction that the game AI is much less than uh, general AI, so we sh shouldn't even try to do this because we don't have the hardware, we don't have the resources. Maybe it will happen organically some, in some way, but we need to be aware that uh, like we are very far from general AI to, for, for using games, unless uh, reality surprises me. Uh, and uh, so we need to narrow the definition, and we need to search for a minimal definition. So. An agent, uh, autonomous virtual agents. Agent is a person that takes act active role or produces a specified effect. And uh, uh, interactive agents, because we don't need them to be totally autonomous, we, we need uh, them to be interactive. That means interacting with the player and interacting with each other. And uh, with a specific purpose for port portraying characters in story worlds. So, uh, they need to stay in character, express their emotions, states, thoughts, and plans. They, they need to be able to make plans. Uh, so the participants, by experiencing the story world, reveal profound truths about the human con condition in the real world, and uh, maybe even uh, learn something about this themselves. Uh, I, I, I think this is possible. Uh, the rules of the world that we make need to model all, all of the above if we want this. Uh, so, uh, good thing is that all these things, which are basis for the characters in, uh, in old media uh, and in real life, are actually uh, can be modeled by goals, uh, and uh, agents should be able to, to select these goals. Uh, but uh, they need to make meaningful choices, otherwise they will not be very believable. So, uh, what does it mean? Uh, that means that you need to make a plan for the future, plan, which is sequence of action choices uh, to accomplish a goal, 
but uh, because your actions affect the world, everything is interconnected, everything that you do transforms the world forever, so when you execute your plan, uh, the world is uh, different, so your plan is obsolete. So you need to update the plan all the time to predict actually what will happen in the future, and to be uh, able to do that, you need imagination. Uh, uh, imagination, so you need a mental mo model of the thing you're uh, predicting. Uh, so mind, actually function of mind is to do this, to virtualize uh, real things. And imagination is uh, using these uh, uh, mind uh, mod mental models to simulate their behavior in time and predict their future states. So uh, this is uh, hard in biology. Evolution took uh, billions of years to, to accomplish this, but in virtual worlds we can simply, because everything is virtual, we can simply copy uh, the world or part of the world, that's, that's important because the worlds are usually huge, uh, and simulate consequences, so the agent uh, is looking into the future and see what, what happens. You basically run an instance of, of, of a game and, and see uh, how it will go depending on each choice. So here we have a unity of form and content because search trees are equivalent to story trees. Uh, what we do with our minds is equivalent to what we try to tell with our interactive stories. And uh, agent uh, can score the future states, uh, imagines the choices, uh, measure how, how far is, is it from, from the uh, uh, wanted goals, and then actually do the one in the present moment so it will uh, turn out to be uh, useful in the future. Uh, all AIs do this in some way, and uh, all people do, and also cats. So, uh, but to, be, to have believable characters, we also need to, uh, to be, because most of AIs in games are just like about movement, but we need uh, uh, human beings uh, have models of other human beings, and they uh, try to predict their thoughts. So, uh, you need to uh, have characters, uh, simulate other characters which simulate you, uh, because I know what you know that I know, so, you know. And uh, actually, this is not science fiction, this is already being researched and done and used in uh, 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 training the soldiers. So it's 2009, and uh, it's not that complicated because it's all like a chess game. You just uh, imagine uh, what your opponent will do, but you score inversely. Like uh, for your opponent's move, you, you, you put a negative value for your own, you put positive values. And uh, this was done uh, before computer games existed. It was done on, 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 on those computers uh, for, uh, um, that Neumann made. But um, the problem here is exponential nature of that story trees. So, uh, but there, there are ways. Like, first time they, they tried in 51, they didn't manage, but then in 58, they did. So, uh, we are getting more powerful hardware, better techniques, uh, maybe quantum computers, they are announced. So, uh, we will uh, get there, I, don't, I can't tell you when, um, but um, the problem is that our present computers are not very powerful. I mean, they are in some terms, but for, for this, they're not uh, powerful enough. So, wh what can we use? We can use those techniques from, all, from the old games. They had ridiculously slow machines. They could, couldn't do anything, but they did stories with uh, dynamic uh, worlds with characters. For, for example, in Hobbit, characters walked, walked around and picked up things and uh, uh, did, did stuff. You could uh, even tell a character to do something for you, like put me on, on the shoulders and then uh, go to the window and climb the window because, uh, and uh, tell him to go somewhere. So. It's, uh, 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 it's, not, uh, uh, it's about reducing because uh, audience is using suspension of disbelief. They want to believe. So when we played these games, we were totally immersed. We, we, we had no problems with that. Uh, uh, characters' uh, behaviors were totally random. But it worked for us. This is also another Spectrum game uh, from uh, 97 by a man called Mike Singleton. And, uh, uh, look at those verbs. Now, the, the, the problem is like uh, um, s the more uh, actions you simulate, the more choices you have, so the bigger the uh, story tree becomes. Uh, but uh, one thing I want you to think about is why don't we have uh, more games which has uh, this amount of verbs and this type of verbs, because everything of this is uh, inter-character relationships. Uh, where are the games with that? Uh, also, you can use techniques from engineering. Uh, 
So you have amazing online courses by Sebastian Tran and Peter Norvig and guys who made uh, Google Cell Drive Car. And they're explaining actually these things in very great detail and formula. So if you're a programmer, you, you can just go there and look at that. And th this is really useful. Uh, be because uh, I was amazed, uh, Sebastian shown on, on a course, uh, like opened the truck of the, of the car and shown that it was all calculated on a, a four uh, 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 quad core Pentium. And I was like, what? A machine that you can buy in a store. So there's uh, other techniques like saliency, generalization. Saliency means uh, that you don't simulate, of course, the whole world, but you uh, cut off uh, uh, one part that's important for the moment, the prominent features. You, you simulate them. You will make a uh, uh, wrong prediction, but uh, we are making wrong prediction in life all, all the time, so it's not a very big problem because like, if character does something wrong, that could be a good for a story. Like, you know that what he tried to do and then he failed, so you have a drama. It's, it's a good. Uh, also, generalization, so instead of simulating, I don't know, 10,000 characters, you put them as one group and simulate that group, so you can uh, layer your world into, uh, uh, you, you can cut your world into layers and make uh, interactions between uh, uh, layers. And each one can simulate a higher order, so it's uh, like instead of 10,000 entities, you can simulate three entities and just, you know, like this army, this army. This is what. Uh, uh, these uh, figures on the strategic maps do so, we can do that too. Uh, you can memorize things that went well and using generalization you can put them in another context and then trigger them so you don't have to cal calculate all, all in advance. We have this in, in our bodies and uh, brains so why not use it for, for the characters. You can use randomness when, uh, when your search uh, is stuck, you can just do something random and try again. Actually, this works very well. Uh, Monte Carlo 3 search, which is used in uh, some games for artificial intelligence, for strategic uh, uh, artificial intelligence, is using this uh, algorithm. Like, do random stuff and then uh, try to uh, like continue doing stuff that br brought you to results and cut off the stuff that, that's not. So it's. Uh, uh, also, uh, the gen genetic algorithms that all can be used for, for, for this. Uh, so, what are minimum, minimum requirements? In my opinion, like, without this, we won't have very believable characters. So, uh, you as game developers should try, this is not uh, happening tomorrow, but in the course of like uh, five or ten years, there will be more and more games modeling this. There already are, even uh, mainstream games, like it's not something uh, obscure. And uh, you, you just uh, try to uh, uh, make a most simple model of these things that you can think of, engage a writer, engage a psychologist, talk to them, and then make a simplification of that, and then run a simulation, see how it behaves, and then improve it. And you will get there in, in time. Um, the thing is, uh, also we can use this like a... Uh, about complex systems, there's amazing uh, uh, work by uh, V. Hart and uh, Nikki Case that's using very simple characters, but uh, showing uh, like uh, very important uh, behaviors of societies, of people, uh, using very simple rules. And these, these rules work in real life. So this is mimicking the real world processes. Like this is a metaphor, this is interactive metaphor for a real world thing where people move out to, from one uh, neighborhood to the other depending on their racial preferences and uh, so. So it's, it's a political thing, but it's also like, so, uh, so not political, but so, sociological thing. Uh, also, you can read uh, psychologists. I uh, recommend uh, Jung over Freud because Freud was reductionist and Jung was not. He actually introduced the term co complex into psychology and he thought it was a building block of psyche. So uh, the, the good thing is wh whatever you do, all the models that you do, you can transfer to next game and to next game, just improve them over games. So you, you're, you don't lose time actually, like you're using, losing time when you're making uh, uh, graphics engines because uh, hardware changes, this, this won't change. Uh, so this, uh, without this also, it would be very uh, pitiful if, if we don't have this as in our models because uh, like uh, humanity deserves it. Like, uh, this can be forgotten. People, if people play games all the time, they are not training themselves into uh, things that are uh, useful in the real world uh, most of the time. So it's important that we encode our the, the 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 best things that we have into rules of our simulation, so they they actually can transfer that back to real life. You're you're teaching children how to live through your games, and. Uh, 
because this is ongoing research, this, these are open problems. Uh, uh, top down, this is what uh, game developers do already for years. And they are uh, first at, at academia, then, then it's going to game development. Uh, start simple, do experiments, uh, generalize. And then when you do generalization, then uh, redo the specific stuff with the general things and you, you'll get uh, reusability. And this is, this is what we use at Trilateral for our models uh, of the face. So, for example, this is the uh, first interactive drama I ever made. It's not graphically very uh, uh, good, but uh, actually they, they model the, the inner states of the character, their relationships. Uh, this prom week also by the uh, uh, Michael Mateas on uh, University of Santa Cruz. He, he, he was doing this stuff and then his students did this. Uh, also amazing work by uh, Richard Evans and Emily Short on Versu. You can go to their website and uh, read the, the material that they, they posted about it, with their thinking and uh, also the solutions that they have. It, it, it's really good. It's not commercial. It wasn't a commercial sex, a success, but the people forget that many of the things that were created through history and that later become uh, uh, commercial successes uh, didn't at the beginning just because uh, people didn't recognize them. Uh, also, Emily Short is uh, working on the tools for uh, authors, for writers to, to, uh, to make this thing easier because it was very hard. She, I, I spoke to her at GDC and she said like the, the biggest problem was uh, modeling these social interactions, so she, she's not trying to solve this. Uh, also, there's another uh, uh, line in, in different directions, like uh, going from bottom up and uh, modeling uh, like sensory motor interactions. And this will, this will probably solve it at, at a point, but uh, like it, because you need the hardware, only uh, researchers at big companies uh, can, and universities could, can, can do this. Um, and these are uh, some, some of the examples of the agents uh, that are not characters but can be used in storytelling. And uh, you have examples of this already uh, in, uh, I think, uh, Far Cry uh, 4. Uh, used the uh, AI director and uh, Left 4 Dead. And so uh, uh, you can, j just like your, your characters are planning what, what they should do, you can have an entity that's uh, calculating all the all the other entities and trying to find something that will be either pleasing to you or scary to you or something. So it's going through your, to, to the choices of the characters, simulating the world and then getting the uh, uh, putting. You can also give them uh, special abilities like uh, make a new character or uh, blow this uh, town or, or away or something. So, so it can create a drama. Uh, to, to make it more interesting. Because the problem is with story worlds, you don't, as author, you don't know how it will uh, end. So, uh, but you can use AI to, to, to predict and then pick up the, 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 the interesting things. And uh, also to maybe try to extract these uh, AI curators that uh, try to extract interesting stories. Because to simulate whole world uh, so ma in so many different choices, that, that's uh, computationally expensive, but uh, you can... Uh, uh, do it once and then pick up the interesting stuff and then build from that. And uh, the reason why I'm telling all this is because uh, when uh, personal computers sta started, uh, the idea was to teach uh, uh, kids to uh, think much uh, better than the adults. And uh, Alan Kay, who was part of that, said that uh, their problem, what they didn't uh, 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 count in, is that uh, humans need spectacle. Humans don't get, not, not many humans get into something that's hard and then spend years uh, studying it. So we can use these systems with uh, uh, believable characters to uh, inspire people to, to try to, to actually learn something about the real world because real world is a dynamic system and it's complex and it's falling apart. So we can uh, help uh, future generations by uh, 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 making uh, story worlds for them that will teach them about the things. So maybe once uh, the idea of personal computing will, will come true, the, how it was envisioned in, at the beginning. And uh, if you want to talk to me about these topics on any other, you can contact me here. And these are if you want to take uh, references uh, for the slides. And if any questions, there's, there should be a mic somewhere. And do, do we have time? Yeah. And we are hiring. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> so if you're a C++ programmer or, or uh, Unreal especially programmer or a researcher in, in mathematics, and uh, uh, you, you can call us. Yeah. Uh, these are the, the education slides, if you want to take. And so the questions, yeah. sorry. Questions? No questions. In a hurry. <laughs> okay. Let's thank I, the speaker I, one more time. Thank you.